And welcome back as we have continuing coverage of the aftermath of Ida. And as we're getting more information now, we're hearing more things about the wind speed of Ida. Trust me, if it's not upgraded to Category 5, someone is not doing their job. We're hearing wind speeds of 190 miles per hour. You heard that from Chip Klein, who is with the CPRA, and he's the executive under the governor for coastal activities. You've heard and seen by now the horror stories on the bayous. And just, just pick a bayou, any of them. There's so much devastation. One thing we forget about in all of this are the people that own marinas and restaurants that service not only us, we love to go down the bayous and eat, but they service the nation. So for those of you watching in the nation that come down here and fish, just to get that one redfish, take a picture, a lot of you release it, you'll hear that in the interview. We want your attention. We need your attention. Because the insurance rates that these folks cannot afford anymore, they're too expensive, has just crippled their business. So to the president, to the senators, to the congressmen, congresswomen, to everyone making decisions, the bureaucrats, maybe some grant money for these people. You did it for those who lost businesses in COVID. Maybe you could do it now. Let's help restore, which is really a sportsman's paradise. How ironic it is. We had a fishing show way back called Sportsman's Paradise, and Connie and Stu and Lizzie, well, they have all been part of a place called Sportsman's Paradise. I sat down with them, had a lengthy discussion. Let's roll it in. Ms. Connie, tell me about your, your restaurant in general. Our restaurant has been an ongoing work for now 48 years I've had the restaurant. And actually the first original building was started in uh, 1955. And we bought it from the Overleys, Hart and Sunny Overly. And I've been here for 48 years. And uh, we've uh, gradually bought uh, more land, added on, people b b built their camps here. Uh, we actually pioneered charter boat fishing for Terrebonne Parish, inside fishing. And actually, uh, I'd say after we came here, then you saw other marinas open up, but you saw the explosion of camps mm -hmm. on the different bayous. And people say, well, Connie, why haven't you left? Uh, aren't you tired of getting flooded? Well, this is flood number 20 for me. I put that place together 19 times already, and now I think I'm getting too old. I'm 75 now, and I think it's about time for retirement. Uh, part of the reason why I never left is because there is no place in the United States that has the fishing and the estuary system that we have, and it's that simple. If you don't have the fish and you don't produce, you don't get the people back. We have it all. I've, I've been here 48 years, 40, okay. so that would that would have been in what the 70s. Yeah, so after Betsy. So yeah, it would have been. I think Danny and Carmen. They were 30 days apart, and yeah. then Juan came in 85. Right. Right. So Danny and Carmen, and I was 25 years old then. And in fact, I was a makeup artist for Estee Lauder out of New York. Mm -hmm. And I was opening Saks Fifth Avenue at the gallery in Houston. And it came on and they said, there's a hurricane that's gonna hit Terrebonne Bay. I said, Terrebonne Bay? That's where I live. Mm -hmm. So right. I said, oh my goodness. I called New York and I said, look, I hate to do this. I have to go home because I'm fixing to lose everything. I have all my clothes, everything down the body. Set. I put my Audubon's and my antique clocks in the trunk of my car. Mm -hmm. He said, you're going to have to attach one of these boats. I said, I've never driven with a boat on my car. How am I going to cross the bridge? He said, you're going to figure it out. That's how you're going to do it. So I said, oh, no, I cannot believe this. He says, you got to get this boat to Thibodeau. So he says, what do you want? You want your nightstand or your bed? I said, what kind of choice is that? You want your tables or your chairs? 
Well, I found out my first storm, it, you, you don't even make a choice like that because what's ever there, if the water's three feet deep, it floats and everything falls in the water anyway. You just as soon leave right. if you're not going to take it with you. Make sure that you take what you want with you when you go and the hurricanes come. Take me through the progression because my first hurricane I covered was in 85 Juan. Juan. Okay. And Juan was a minimal hurricane, but it sat over here for three days. What happened is we got hit by Juan twice. It went out, came in, and went out. Now, Kuda, who is my son, probably everybody knows. No, everybody knows he's the best offshore fisherman. He's unbelievable. Anyway, he had broke his arm. So I said, well, I'm going to take my insurance papers, my checkbook, and my kids. Uh, I'm gone. So Stu says, well, I'm staying in the restaurant. Well, guess what? The water kept getting deeper and deeper and deeper. So he got out the window, got on the highway, and went over to Castex and got up in their loft till everything subsided and went away. But we lost everything for that storm, too. Mm -hmm. Actually, um, I was telling you before, uh, I've, this is my 20th flood, not my 20th hurricane, my 20th flood. And I put that restaurant and all these grounds back together 19 times already. So now we had a lot of back-to-back -back storms. You had like uh, Isidore and uh, Lily, mm -hmm. uh, Gust Ike and Gustav. Right. You had those storms that were either one week, two weeks, or three yeah. weeks, Katrina or four weeks and apart. Rita too. Re uh, that was uh, 2005. Rita and Katrina. Yeah. And Rita and Katrina. Now, Katrina, we only got 12 inches of water. But Rita, we got 62 inches of water in the restaurant. And Ike, I think Ike, we got 64 inches of water in the restaurant. Yeah, so, Rita uh, was a 10-foot storm surge, and it was 180 miles away. Yeah. And I'll tell you what hit us unexpectedly, and I don't think Terrebonne Parish was expecting it. They, they didn't take into consideration that when a hurricane uh, that was in 1991 which would have been uh, come on which one it hit florida well no you're talk, talking about andrew that was 92. andrew 92. 92 okay what it did it hovered the coast but it sent a tidal surge in mm -hmm, sure did so we really got whacked for that too i mean it, it was arena had 12 feet of water yeah for Andrew. Mm -hmm. I'd imagine it was fairly close. We, but she had about eight I, foot maybe? I, I, I didn't have eight. Mm -hmm. I don't think I had eight in the restaurant. They had no. way more than the, we did. The, yeah, they had way more than we did. The deepest my water's been in the restaurant besides this storm, I think it went up over the roof because there's no grass line. And one of the refrigerators that put it up on top of my desk, that's how deep the water was in the back kitchen. You'll see when you go in there. Lizzie, how new is this equipment? Six weeks. All brand new equipment, brand new everything. And it picked it up and threw it on top of my desk. Like all this was redone. All the rooms were redone from Zeta, new tile, new paint, new furniture, new everything. All new equipment destroyed, completely destroyed. Everything in the middle kitchen where we prepare everything, it's destroyed. There's closets and hallways that are in, in the middle of the building. Can't we get to them? You can't get to them. All the shelving units are out and they're somewhere they're not supposed to be from the water. I mean, it's just, how do you it's clean this up? It's a shame. Look at that. This is a dump. What do you do with this? Where do you start? Never has it been like this. I mean, we've had clear water and devastation but this is like a bomb went off i don't even know what to say unbelievable but what and i and i'm trying to get more into the psyche because i know y'all well know lizzie well Y'all have rebuilt so many times. What gives you the energy to keep doing that? It's the customers and the fishing. We have the most, well, like right now I can tell you, take Judge Blanche. That is a, a colorful character that was a judge 
in Baton Rouge. He stayed in room two, okay? He came down with his boys. He would go spend the night out on the island. We worried about him because he had an old boat. I said, do you have any money? Can't you buy you a new boat? Every time you leave here, I get upset because I don't know if you're coming back. You know, and he'd laugh. He said, you, you think I don't have any money? I said, well, the looks of your boat, you don't. Know? <laughs> but they were characters. Bob Scarce, remember Bob Scarce? He used to stay in room four. He was the sports writer and TV person from Baton Rouge. He would stay in four. I had another guy, in fact, he called me and very upset. Kathleen he Blanco. says, yeah, yeah Kathleen Blanco likes. used to come down. Uh, uh, he said, you know, my boys and I had some of the best times. We'd go in and get a shrimp pull boy and sit on the ice chest in room eight. I said, I remember you rented room eight all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, I've had the best conversations of my life with my kids down at your place. He says, you know, for years you never had TVs in the rooms. And I said, for a reason. Mm -hmm. I said, because people with their modern communications and everything and TV, they're distracted and they don't want to have conversation. You bring your kids down here to fish, they're sitting on ice chest in the room. I said, and they're talking to you at night. They right. sure did. And the fishing is like no place in the United States. Mm. Lizzie's worked here since she was little. I raised my kids in the restaurant. I had play pins in the restaurant. And when Cuda was little and uh, we got hit with the first storm, the uh, we didn't have any money, and uh, we couldn't pay people to help us. So I would have the guys come in from Energy and Bell South, and they were trying to put everything back together again. And I'd have a, a sign on Kuda's playpen, and I said, do not feed the animal. <laughs> because they'd give him chips and stuff, you <laughs> see? And, he, and it would, I was afraid he'd choke, and I was in the kitchen. Right. So I'd have them right there. Uh, uh, order down and they bring it to me in the kitchen and then when it was ready I'd holler out to them and I said look if I'm cooking and he needs to be tended to you guys are gonna have to take care of Kuda but if it wasn't for the community and people coming together we couldn't have done it you know when you're that young you don't have money saved and then you got hit that many times it just Kuda provides for his family here Lizzie, My grandkids your... work here, yeah. and they depend on me, like to pay their college rooms and stuff. And now their jobs are gone. My job is gone. Yeah. Kuda, my dad is just. Lizzie, what's your first recollection of being here? Oh God, I was born and raised here, living in that apartment that exploded. The one that exploded. The one that exploded. That's where I lived back That's there before. That's where me and Cooter were raised, mm -hmm. and we were raised by everybody that worked in here. I mean, we, our employees, some of our employees were here 30, 40 years. Mary Lee and was here 40, 40 up to three years. Everybody tells me every day, like you're so lucky to have your house. I am lucky to have my house. But this is my home. This is my home. When you get used to this, or you sit on the porch and you see the back lake, this and, is home. And you smell the it's, water in the breeze, you know? It's completely different. What, what did each storm teach you along the way? Because you got to be tough, first of all, to live out here, because you're going to get some, you're going to get it right from the lake. It's going to hit you. But what did each one teach and then the one that just roared through? Okay. Right now, we have a problem between the two levee systems. We've created a bowl here, and these northwest, if you're in that northwest quadrant, there's nowhere for the water to go. So it just gets deeper and deeper. Last year, for Zeta, we had 31 inches of water, and this year, I'm, I'm gonna say it was about 10 feet, between nine and 10 feet of water. And you have rushing water that fast, it eats, you know, everything up. I mean, it's unbelievable. But what I did, how, what I would do with the other hurricanes is, first of all, I would thank them for leaving my 
buildings that I had something to come home to. Mm -hmm. And you have to be grateful. But I, I haven't been grateful this time, except I asked for him to not let my camp blow away, and he didn't, so I, I can't ask for anything else. But I at least had a structure to come back to. And then I said, what can I do to this building that I couldn't have afforded to do? Whether it was change the floors, change the walls, you know, whatever to make an improvement. It's like when I went from the little tile when we bought this place. You know how you used to have that little, those little bitty one inch tiles? Mm -hmm. And now they have the big, on a diagonal, 12 inch squares that go across, okay? So I said, well, I would be able to afford to redo this, but because we got flooded out, I can do this, okay? Or I couldn't add granite, and then I added granite, you see? So I tried to make an improvement to these, this property with each flood and then give thanks for being able to do that. Because, you know, it's a seven month business. I mean, you have five down months that if you can pay your utilities and whatever, you're, you're doing good and keep your employees. Other than that, you know, you got seven months to make it and then that's it. We just finished redoing everything. In May. Everything. I just finished. I re we did all the showers, all the walls. I put in new ceramic tile in that whole building. The boat we sheds, finished it. The, the docks, We did the everything. boat sheds. And, the, uh, and uh, it's, I did, we did all these porches, everything. The problem down here is they don't want you down here. They have made the insurance so high, so high that you have to pick and choose. Do you want flood or do you want wind? Most of these people do not have wind down here because you can't afford it. You can't buy wind policy for 60 grand and rent a trailer out. It, it would take you five or six months to recoup just to pay the policy. Like what they are asking you to pay, it's just not feasible. And, and see it's what not FEMA did, and just like what Lizzie's talking about, is they went up 100%. So if every time they went up, I took 25%, I've got 25% less insurance to compensate for the amount of money that they went up. This is the least we've so ever had. I, this is the least amount of flood insurance with I the most have it destruction. With the most destruction because they put that burden on us. Our government put that burden on us. I mean, if you can go to all these foreign countries and pay for all their houses and pay for people and stuff and send them money, why can't they take care of the people in the United States? Like, keep our insurance under wrap so that we can afford it. You know, we're the ones that take the risk down here. You're gonna tell me that nobody wants to eat seafood or nobody wants to go fishing? You know, they, they need to, they say, oh, well, y'all need to get out of there because you know it's gonna flood. Have you ever heard anybody running a fishing dock from up in Homa? Where do you dock your boat? How's it going to come in and unload? Where are you going to get your crabs and stuff? But they you would know? be the first ones who want to come down here when they visit. To eat right. seafood. Right. Yeah. But, so uh, therein lies the problem because since Katrina, Lafouche and Terrebonne has not re been reimbursed by FEMA at all. So all the monies they promise for levies, for everything else, we tax ourselves to do it. The locals tax themselves right. in the state. So all the levies we could have, if they would have backed up what they said, I would probably be looking at a levy behind you. It needs it. To protect you. It probably would have been built if the feds would give the money. What do you think needs needs to be done? It's, you've you're, been you're here, you know. Have, yeah, you're going to have to have a... First of all, they need to get someone that is local, that lives in this area, to be on some of those boards, you know, to let them know what the problem is with opening and closing the floodgates, when you sh need to do it. Is there a problem? Well, you know, if, if, if you're sitting in a restaurant on Saturday night and the other one's down here getting flooded, you know, Shrimpers it's, and charter boat captains. They do. know. They, they know. know. They They've live it. Their lives. whole livelihood. We 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 depend on everything being right. So, I've been flooded four times since the levee system's been put in. I'm the one that told them they needed to put a levee in here 
from Boudreaux Canal to Robinson Canal right. because we're all going under. Which they all are the talking time. about. And they're talking about it. So they they do listen. Yeah. And the lift gates they need on some the, way with the hydraulic rams that would censor the water rising. This is a phenomenon I don't think anybody Well, expected. it's a learning process. Yeah. And I realize that that it's a learning process. Mm -hmm. But what when you got a bowl here, what pumps this water out? How can you have three feet of water in Cocodry and I'm sitting with over nine feet of water here. Mm -hmm. Explain that to me and I'm inside the levee system. So that right there is a problem that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you think? Uh, absolutely and I think I think they recognize it but I think this these two last two storms have opened their eyes and because I've never covered storms like this. Coming from I've these, never been in a storm like I always this. dreaded these storms coming from that event. We always talked about it, but we never had them. Right. Gustav came similar, but it wasn't a, I, I call this a Cat 5. What well, we had 180 mile an hour winds. So, you know, it's just like a Zeta last year. Do you remember when it was coming in? What did they tell people? Oh, it's a one. It might be a two. They wish it was a one. Yeah. It was a three. Mm -hmm. It could have been three border and a four. This actually was a five. It looks okay. like a 180 mile. mile an hour winds is a five, no matter how you look at it. I've been through three fours. This was not a four. You could go down the street, look here. It's not a four. So still, we've been talking about the dynamics of these last two storms, but every storm unfortunately teaches us a different lesson. You've been on the waters your whole life. As a matter of fact, Lizzie told me the other day you sort of predicted this storm, what it was going to do. How did you know that? Well, <clears throat> you know, we always knew that it wasn't a matter of uh, when it was going to come. It was, I mean, it was a matter of just when it, if it was going to come, it was a matter of when it was going to come. And I said, we'd do any any time now. I mean, these last couple of years we had, you know, pretty good warnings and I just had that gut feeling that the big one was coming and this is it. I, I've been through every storm down here since 74. Actually, I know them all. Carmen, Juan, Andrew, Katrina, Danny. Gustav, Ike, Rita, and all of them combined from what I can see can't compare to this one. Uh, of course, you know, the national media doesn't really focus on us down here. I mean, because it didn't hit a major metropolitan area like New Orleans, mm -hmm. we're just like a blip on the radar here. No big deal, you know. Um, but the devastation here is just catastrophic. And, you know, for years, I I've been on the water out there. I've been running charters. This was my 50th year running charters out here. And... Um, what I've seen in my lifetime here, as far as the, the land uh, disappearing, is unbelievable. I don't think there's anybody has been out there as many days as I have over that period of time. And the land is disappearing. I don't think the people in the know even know how bad it is. I think, I think the engineers and the people in the know that are developing all this are going to have to go back to the drawing boards and, and start figuring out. We need freshwater diversion. We've got to reroute the Chafalaya River through big canals or however they want to do it and get that sediment flowing in here and build this land back up. But you know, it's a, it's a, it's a controversial because you have so many user groups fighting it. You got the shrimp association, you got shrimpers, you got crabbers, you got oyster people, you got the seafood people, you got the wholesale retail, even the restaurant association. They're saying that the freshwater diversion is going to destroy the shrimping and the crabbing and the oysters. But where people are oyster fishing and shrimping today, 50 years ago, was land. Right. We're saying, let's just push the line back to where it was maybe in the 60s. It's working down the river. Carnarvon and uh, the Davis uh, <coughs> Diversion Project down there working. All you got to do is down there and see. It's been in place for like 25 years. It's already reclaimed six or 7,000 acres of new land and marsh. It's working. So. And I know that the money, we don't have the money here locally or in the state, and it's going to have to come from the federal government. 
and it's hard to convince senators or reps in the other states, in Idaho and Maine, all those places, you got to send, you know, fifty billion dollars to the Louisiana coast to fix it. The but, only the only saving grace with that is Chuck Schumer just got flooded from the same storm we did. <laughs> they say he's thinking a little different now. Right. Because I don't know how far that'll. But you you've you seen know, it. We just left. We just left. Eighty billion dollars worth of military hardware to Afghanistan. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Could you imagine what we could have done with four or five billion dollars of that down here? I mean, it's just, you know, I hate to get involved in the pop political end of it, but uh, it's, it's just mind boggling. Let me ask you this because over the years, I think we all would agree they made vast improvements on the levy system. But we keep running, the feds keep promising. They don't deliver. They never deliver. This is the first year we may get money. But, and I was asking Ms. Connie a while ago, what do you think the answer is right there? Levy, all the way across these lakes, Robinson and Lake Boudreaux? Like I said, I don't know. I'm not an engineer and I really can't answer that question. I, I just know they need to go back to the drawing boards and figure out something if they want to save this area. But I think the most important thing to me right off the bat is we've got to get sediment. We've got to do freshwater diversion projects. Got to get that in here. Mm -hmm. Like I say, it's working everywhere else. Mm -hmm. But it's and, such and, a political football. And it's such an open, I'm looking at it. Yeah. Looking at it behind you. There was nothing to stop that water. Yeah. And, then, and it's a money thing too. It's got to come from the federal government. There's no doubt. And again, like I say, you can't convince legislators in Maine and Idaho and all these places to send all that money to the Louisiana coast. They don't, they can't comprehend or understand it. No more than our, our people would uh, want to build a dam project in Idaho to save uh, who knows what, you know, mm -hmm. so it's a, it's a tough issue. I think personally that the federal government has just more or less given up on this area down here. It's like they don't want you to live here. That's why the insurance is so saying. high. Yeah, the insurance you is high. You can't even afford the insurance. <laughs> like, but, this area here produces so much natural gas and oil, and, and we're the seafood capital of the, of the U.S. here. We produce more oysters, more shrimp, more crawfish, mm -hmm. more finfish than probably any other area in the country. And it's such a unique area. It needs to be saved. It, it's a double-edged sword. It really is. You know? Well, you know, I'm very, and, and I, like I said, I, I know it probably upset some people because I'm very political. I'm very outspoken. I'm a far-right conservative patriot, and we can pay. For, we can pay. Give everything to all these illegals that are pouring in this country. We can do everything for everybody else. Why can't they take care of our people down here? First, you know, regardless of which side of the political fence you're on, you, you, you got to see what's going on down here. And, it's just all out of all out of whack to me. Yeah. Have y'all seen the Red Cross down here? No. 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 I don't I think in all my years of covering storm, I saw the Red Cross one time. Hurricane Andrew. We I haven't can, seen anyone down here. I not no one from the parish, public nobody. I just posted nobody. today for people not to uh, donate anything to Red Cross. The CEO makes six hundred and ninety four thousand dollars a year. No. So I looked understand. at all their audit from the last two years. It's really frightening to think that people are giving money to them and what they're spending their money on. No Red Cross donations for me. Let you me know how I would do this? Seriously. I mean, you've got people like Cyrus Petrie, okay? He's been here for 52 years, I think, okay? I mean, where do you get a tire fix down here now? The Conoco Station's out. There's no place. Simple little things like that. Buy your magazines out. See what they had in insurance, what it's going to cost to get their buildings back. And if you did a GoFundMe page, then try to raise enough money to pay the difference between the insurance and what it costs to rebuild that people can get back open again. I'm not saying just turn around and hand people a lot of money. Do it to whatever it costs for them to open their business again. If you don't mind me asking again, what was the increase in premium? What, it's what's a hundred percent increase, okay? Now, I, like I was explaining to you, this is a seven-month business. 
okay? A lot of people couldn't adjust their checking account to do without a check for five months. Have you ever done that? Five months with no payroll, no check? Okay, That's what well, we this is what you learn how to do, okay? You have seven months to pay everything, and then you got five down months. Well, what happened is they went up 100% in four years. So on that note, what we did, and the only way we could do it is when they went up the first 25%, I took 25% of my insurance and I cut it back so that my note would be the same. Okay, and then the next year it was 50% more, then 75, then 100%. And can't you afford can't, this. And you can't pass that on to the clients at that rate. You can't do it. No. no. It won't come? It doesn't, doesn't work. Wow. You can't afford the insurance here. FEMA is restructuring everything right now with their rates. We just had a class on it recently. And so in this year coming up, they're going to be working on some residential areas. And in the next year, or 2022, they're going to start going by individual properties and not just a whole group or spot. So that will help somewhat. And they'll be cutting back some. Everybody FEMA's should look joke. into their well, insurance for next year. Let me tell you how this works, too. I applied years ago to have my buildings lifted, okay? Well, they said FEMA doesn't pay to lift commercial buildings, but that is incorrect. Yes, they do pay to lift commercial buildings. Now I'm on the list now, now my buildings are destroyed, okay? They're a little late after 48 years. Mm -hmm. Those buildings should have been lifted seven or eight or 10 years ago. What's the 12 feet? Well, it should have been 16. 16? 16 bottom, yeah. But you, too late. Well, you lift house after house after house. Mm -hmm. We put a lot of taxes back into this uh, parish too. But FEMA does pay to lift commercial buildings. Why hasn't anybody, now they're doing it and they're looking at it, why didn't they do it before and try to get us some help to get our buildings lifted? Because they don't want you down here. Basically. That's all it is. That's we, a hard pill to swallow. How many employees do we have that have been here all their lives and they can't even afford insurance now? They have to pick and choose. That's the Because they don't down want here. you down Once here. Once they get lifted, they, they a lot of them take off uh they'll take they'll say, Well, I'm not gonna get flood insurance anymore. Uh I might get wind and then they, when then when they go to price wind it's like a double-edged sword. This is what they do. They tell you they want you to de-immobilize these trailers, which now it becomes a regular camp. But well, that's not true. They're telling you wrong. They charge you all this money to do that and to file the papers on it, okay? And then you go to get insurance. They say, well, we can only give you $20,000 worth of wind on your trailer because it's still a trailer. I said, no, it's a camp now. And they said, no, it isn't. You see, one says it is, one says it isn't. So what is it? Why Why do you pay this fee to get that done if it's not a camp now? Let me ask you, Stu, have you ever seen anything as bad as Ida? Never. Like I said, all the storms that, that I've been through down here combined can't compare to this one. This, this is just catastrophic. It looks like the Chinese nuked us. You know, and the other thing we didn't really touch on, this area is so unique. Um, I was the first inland, full-time inland charter guy, believe it or not, on the Louisiana coast back in, I first started in 71, running charters here. And we have built it up now. It's probably one of the three top de destinations in North America to come fishing. People come here from everywhere. I got clients from as far away as Idaho, Maine. They love it here. This is a very unique place. I'm going to tell you, and you probably recognize this name. Do you know who Lefty Cray is? He is one of the gurus, has written 30-something, he's died at 92, of fly fishing. He came down here quite a few years ago, and uh, Blaine Townsend took him out. That was my second husband. Took him out fly fishing, and uh, he kept looking around and looking around, and he says, Blaine says, Lefty, what are you looking for? He said, well, where are all the boats? He said... There aren't any. 
He said this is the most pristine fly fishing in the whole United States. He said this is unbelievable. He said to see a hundred redfish tailing in the shallows. He says, if I didn't ever cast a rod, just to see that is, is just unbelievable. You know how many people fly into Hammonds Airport that come fishing here and get back on their plane and go yeah. back to their house? It's, we have people it's that are coming from all over the United States to do one thing. They only want one big redfish and they put it back. It's the greatest thing that ever happened to us. They don't keep their fish. Fly fishermen don't keep their fish. They want to go out to those islands and they want to catch their picture with one mm -hmm. big red. That's it. They don't care what it costs, they want that red fish. It's unbelievable, really. In closing, let me ask you all this. You take a turn answering, it, it doesn't matter what order. If you had, because this is going to be Facebook Live and YouTube Live, and we've been having a national audience, so it's not just home of people listening. Cedric Richmond right-hand man to the president from Louisiana. He carries a lot of stroke. What would you tell him? Help. <clears throat> we need help. They need to get us some grant money down here right now. Not a fit, not SBA loan. I've already paid back 10 or 12 of those, okay? We need grant money for these businesses to get back in business. Sort of like COVID. So, so, sort of like COVID. That's mm -hmm. right. They did it for the restaurants. Why can't they do it for the marinas and stuff? Or the small businesses that have been here for 50-something years. You know, give them some help. They're not asking for everything. They're going to use their insurance money. But the insurance money isn't going to pay for what happened to these buildings. Mm -hmm. Stu? I would just tell them, look, this is one of the most unique areas in, in the country. The culture, the food, the fishing. And the people down here need help, you know. I mean, we can take, like I said, we can take care of all the illegal immigrants. We ought to be able to take care of the people in the lower areas. I mean, we're the, we're the, this is the most unique, greatest fishing area left in the North American continent, you know, on a 12-month basis. Yeah, there's some places in Canada you can go fly in, you know, a couple, three months out of the year. But down here, the fishing 12 months a year is, is unreal. we got people that have fished all over the country, and they say there's no place like this. No place. But y'all keep talking about the big shots that come down here and the celebrities that come down here. But when they leave, they all think y'all are celebrities. Your name's been all over the world. Right. So it works both ways. And you know, what's another kind of funny thing, a lot of people that come down here and they find out how great the fishing is, it's like they don't want to tell anybody because they don't want more people coming down here. <laughs> they try to keep it to themselves. I've had people fish with me that have fished everywhere in the North American continent, and they said they've wasted their whole life fishing. This is where they should have been all the time. So, you know, for the fishing, not only the fishing, but the, just the, the culture itself, uh, uh, we need help down here. Also, if you want to go to the interview I had with Chip Klein, he talks about the monies that are coming in. We pitched the idea about maybe getting some kind of rock levy or something to help out other people when these reverse head storms come through. Zeta and Ida killed the southern parts of Terrebonne Parish from a reverse effect. And Parish President made a good point. The structures that are to be built already on the books, we're going to help that, but might even get a rock jetty uh, to help out with the reverse phenomenon for Lake Boudreau and Lake Robinson. So uh, with that said, we appreciate uh, the whole crew at Sportsman's Paradise for sitting down with us and giving us a candid interview. And we just hope and pray that everyone who lives in that area, we, we've heard the stories about Cecil Laparus and about Laparuses, and I talked with Roxanne Savan about the water coming up and just crushing her docks and turning her trucks over. And then we've heard from Connie and Stu and Lizzie and Linda about what took place in their area. We can't forget about these people. Now, those of us who live in the city, 
we can't forget about the Bayou communities. If we lose the Bayou communities in Terrebonne and Lafourche Parish, put the key in the city, lock it, and leave. Because that's what we're born on, that's what we grew up on, and we have got to fight hard to make sure they become whole. And by becoming whole, get more protection, keep going forward. The Levy District, Tony Alford, Reggie, Window, Gordy, the whole gang, we, we have grown our levy system unbelievable. And we've got a little work to do. We learned it from this storm. But they're acknowledging that. They're not hiding from it. They're acknowledging the fact that we have work to do. So let's keep working. Let's keep fighting. All right, for the whole crew here at HTV, we'll see you on another segment.